Hey everyone and welcome to Squidly Bits. This is our second channel with quicker videos about miniature painting and Warhammer hobby. And as you guys know, we've released our own paint set together with Vallejo. And today I want to talk about our non-metallic metal recipe for copper. Because we've got one that we think that you'll really like. So we've got this lovely Sigmarine here ready for some highlighting. And one thing to keep in mind is that about 90% of what makes NMM look amazing is where you place the highlights. And in this video we're going to cover that a little bit, but it's also going to be even more so about selecting the right colors and making it look like real copper. When painting non-metallic metal we want to start with a dark base and build our way up. So we start with a completely black primed miniature and cover all of the metal parts using dark rust. The second step is quite simple, but again, this requires a little bit of thought when it comes to the light placement and the highlight placement. And you should be a little bit careful when placing the highlights because if you're a little bit too messy, it might end up looking quite messy in the end. In this paint set, we got a color called Burnt Red and we use that to map out the highlights. In this step, it's important to know that when we paint with this color, it's about 80% of the color covered in this brown. And we leave only about 20% of the mini with that darker brown. The dark rust color especially shines through on all of the areas in between the different parts to create some separation and get a black line in between the different highlighted areas. But we also make sure to not cover all of the other areas because we want to get the feeling of reflective light and to get some of those areas really dark. We paint this color with a fully covering layer, meaning you don't thin it down to get smooth blends. No, you want sharp edges and the clear placement of where you put the paint. And that's our first step and your mini should look something like this. So if you want to copy this exact paint job, just print screen this part and use as a reference. For the second highlight, we add a mix of about 30% sunny skin tone to the burnt red. The thing to keep in mind when adding this highlight is that we want to focus our main brightness to the center of the mini around the face and the torso. But we also want to add this highlight to all of the reflective areas in the center of the shin guards, the knee pads and his thighs. Adding this to only about 50% of the miniature. Again, you can paint these layers using a quite thick paint. Like it should be thinned down so it's not big blobs, but it should be fully covering. We then go in with our third highlight, this time using about 60% sunny skin tone and 40% of the burnt red. And this is where you need to be a little bit more selective on where you place the highlights. Because we want the brightness around this area to be a lot stronger than it is at the bottom, maybe the last highlight that we added is the brightest point you have on the feet or on areas in the back where you don't want it to be quite as reflective. And then these upcoming highlights we add to the main focal areas and just the tip of the knee pad and the top edge of a highlight of the foot. We'll do the same step in the painting as in the last one. And this time we add the highlight to only about 20% of the miniature, focusing in on some of the areas to make them shine even more. Just make sure to add it to a slightly smaller surface than the previous layer and to a little bit less surfaces than you did in the previous layer. And now it's time for the fourth step, but first, if you're copying this paint job, make sure to take a print screen to see where the light placements are and how much brightness we add into each area. So for the fourth step, we bring out the orange paint, hot orange, and this time we're just gonna glaze it. And glazing means that we're pretty much thinning down the paint, so it's more like a color filter as opposed to thick layers that changes the light of the mini. It's just there to change the color. And glazing with this orange really brings the highlights together, making it feel like copper. 
But the miniature isn't 100% done quite yet. We've got one more step and that is bringing in the final punch. This time we bring out a clean sunny skin tone. Meaning that so far we've only used four different colors and this will be the last one. With the sunny skin tone we go in punching the final highlights, the most raised areas, the most center part of the torso and the head with just a few fine dots pushing that contrast to the max. And with this color, when we add it cleanly just as it is, we just want to focus it on a few select areas. We don't want to cover it too much because if we add this everywhere, we're gonna lose a lot of that volume that we have to the miniature now, where it's brighter and more focused where the light is hitting and then darker the further away we get from that area. So just a few selected dots in the center of the torso on some edges to punch the contrast even a little bit more. And with that guys, Five steps, four colors, the most beautiful non-metallic copper you've ever seen. Perfect for dwarves or old stuff that is made from copper. Like uh, skeleton shields and armors and stuff like that. If you like detailed tutorials like this, you can join our Patreon where we post more videos like this. Where the paints that we use in this video are included. We got the link to those down in the video description. We hope you enjoyed it. Massive thanks to all of our patrons. Have a great day. Bye bye.